Good morning, good afternoon, good night. I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the east of England and I wanted to talk today about the immigration rules. Um, since I've been doing these videos, well I started doing the videos when I heard about those Jamaicans being deported and some of the their family members trying to help them and they didn't know have any information and the lawyers were ripping them off left right and center one lady paid 22000 pounds to a lawyer and her husband was still deported and i just felt that if they had a certain amount of information they would know what to do they would know whether or not to ask their family members to pull together and get the money in i mean if they knew that they didn't stand a chance they would know that that money could be spent better elsewhere so I decided to in I decided to do the research for people not thoroughly because I really don't have the time but give enough information to so that they can run with it and do their own investigation and you know just make sure that they have a little bit more information on which to make decisions on anyway going through um doing my research and stuff, I realized how convoluted the immigration um, process is and the procedures and the rules. And I'm like, if I have that difficulty trying to understand all these different aspects of it, how can anybody else? I mean, I have a legal background. I mean, I worked for solicitors for a long time. I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer, but I did. I've worked for solicitors for years and years and years. So I do have an understanding of how things work. Well, I do have a level of common sense, put it that way. I have um, I have a business background and I also have a counselling background and I do lots of different things. But anyway, so I thought I'd put all my experiences together and all my qualifications together and try to help people understand what is going on. They change the immigration rules every couple of months, maybe even every month. They stick a bit in here. There's an amendment there. They don't tell anybody about the amendment unless you are an immigration lawyer. You don't know. And so how are people, the layperson, how are they supposed to know what's going on? How are they supposed to abide by rules that are so complex and convoluted? And then they're getting penalised. Not only are they penalised by the immigration rules, but they're penalised by being outpriced, overpriced, and so that they can't even afford to be legal, even if they wanted to. Anyway, the reason why I decided to do this video is because um, I thought it was just me, you know, as a layperson, um, but thinking that the immigration rules were convoluted and complex. So I was quite relieved when I came across um, something that Lord Justice Irwin wrote or said, and somebody wrote it down, which, and he's a senior judge. So I'm going to read it out. It's not very long. Um, number one, he said the immigration rules are a disgrace. And he said they're completely impenetrable by a layperson. And he said this talking at the Professional Negligent Bar Association on the 17th of April. He, he spoke about the obscurity and the cannibalistic drafting of the legislation, saying the immigration rules are a classic example of that. Now, I'm not quite sure what he means by cannibalistic. Um, I kind of think it has to be ritualistic or, you know, convoluted, complex, but it's still... I mean, the imagery of the word cannibalistic, I can see it. Cannibalistic drafting is quite a powerful imagery, but I don't know how to translate that into words. But anyway, that's what he said. The other senior judge is Lord Justice Underhill, and he presented at the EEA Nationals Regulations. And he said drafting is more difficult where political objects, come, political objectives come into play. And what he meant by that is that, you know, the Home Office and whether it's UK Border Force, whoever it is, that that conglomerate of people, they have an agenda and they have these political objectives and they are constructing the immigration rules around it so it meets their ends. 
That's not how the immigration rules should work. The immigration rules should be a set of rules that somebody can follow and abide by. They shouldn't be designed to trip up and catch up and, you know, confuse people, which is how they are in their current form. Um, Lord Justice Underhill also said that stated in a judgment that the web of rules and guidance has become so tangled that even a spider has difficulty in controlling it. I assume by the spider he means the home office or even, you know, immigration lawyers. I mean, it's so complex that and intertwined. They put one bit here, they put one other bit there, they put another bit on another page. They're all interrelated. But if you don't connect the dots, you, you, you know, you trip up. And next thing you know, your application's been thrown out and you've wasted 2000 It's not like they give you the money back. I mean, why would you not give people their money back? £2,400 or whatever the fee is that they're paying. Why would you not give it back if they've made a mistake? That is theft. As far as I'm concerned, it's theft. Because somebody's paying for a service. They're not getting that service. Oh, don't even let me go there. Um, but at least now, the Law Society warned about the grave problems in our immigration and asylum system and called for an immigration and asylum process that is fit for purpose. So hopefully they're going to reform it. The Law Commission intends to redraft the rules and make them simpler and more accessible. So at least that's good news, because sometimes we can feel a bit victimised, can't we? I mean, you're, you're trying to get yourself straight. You're trying to do things right. You're trying to understand the rules. They change every five minutes. The fee goes up every bloody minute. And then, you know, you kind of think... You don't understand what they're saying. One minute it says one thing, the next minute it says another. So I'm so glad that we have somebody on side, like the Law Commission and the Law Society, that have looked into it because sometimes these forms are just drafted. These bills and these rules are usually drafted. Nobody reads them. They pass them through and they're stamped and that's it. And so nobody's stopped to think, oh, you know, that doesn't make sense. That might be a bit too difficult for somebody to understand. They don't do that. In my job, we do standing operating procedures. I'm doing them all the time. And what's important is how another person perceives what I'm trying to say. It's fine me writing all these long words and fancy words, but who's going to understand it? So rules are meant to be understood. Otherwise, what is their purpose? You shouldn't have to pay an attorney to understand the rules. You can under, you can, uh, uh, sorry, you can employ an attorney to deal with the technical aspects of, of, of the document or of your application. But everybody should be able to read and understand the immigration rules. Anyway, I think I'm going to stop there. Otherwise, you know me. I go on and on and on and on and on and I don't want to tonight. Okay, have a good evening. Bye bye.